Let's bring in Vipi Baisan as we look at these pictures. He is a associate professor of history over at Ibn Haldun University. Uh, Vipi, good to have you back on. Uh, Naim in his news package was talking about uh, the demise of the Ottoman Empire and the first years of the Republic. But in the first part of our conversation with you, I'd like to sort of maybe concentrate on the years that Ataturk was leading the country mm. and the years shortly after he passed away in 1938, mm. up until about the 1950s, because that is an important sort of milestone in the country. Um, in 1923, when the Turkish Republic was, was founded, yes, it was a democracy, but it was a single party democracy. Oh yeah, certainly. I mean, uh, but first let's remember that a few years earlier than that, the parliament was uh, announced. That's, uh, I think, another milestone. Uh, but that takes us back to uh, the tradition, almost half a century long tradition, of relying on a constitution. That came in 1876, when Sultan Abdul Hamid assigned the throne. We call it the first constitutional era, and then 1908, second constitution. So you can see that the democratization did not happen in one day and one night. It actually goes back even to Sultan Mahmud's era, started in 1808 when he died 1839. So when it comes to the reforms in 1920s, a lot of it uh, were uh, uh, created to give uh, a spectrum and a future establishment or future investment uh, for the new republic. Therefore, they were quite strict and in a sense sudden and blunt. You see, mm -hmm. so like in um, 1924, we have uh, this new establishment as uh, adopting the criminal law as well as the civil law from Europe, each from other countries. And then 1928, the alphabet has been changed. And little after that, in 18, uh, 1931, we had the institution taking care of the both language and then another, uh, sorry, uh, Turkicizing the language more, bringing in Turkish uh, vocabulary. And then you have the uh, foundation of Turkish uh, history. So people really worked hard to get in. The party uh, came actually very active in 1930s, to be fair, until uh, Ataturk's uh, death in 1938. So. There was a, you can see even the demand was there to have, you know, multi-party system. Mm -hmm. and, and, and late 1940s that they changed the law or, or, or brought in new ones and we had all this multi-party system and 50s we have the election. What did, what did it mean for a country to move? Or it, it, it wasn't sort of like an overnight transition, as you say, but starting no. going back into, into uh, the late uh, 19th century. Yeah. Uh, where we actually had sort of tastes of, of pluralism and yep. then sort of going and actually really exercising that. This was really important for uh, the, the country that we live in today. Well, absolutely, absolutely. I think history helped us understand how things evolved and it did not happen in, in one night. So therefore, I think it should be emphasized more. But my students always uh, say these things. Look at it now. Uh, I will go back more in 1820s, 1820s, you see, like 100 years earlier. So almost 200 years ago from today. Yes. Sultan Mahmud II, he is the first one. Now, look, I'm going to say something quite important, could be controversial, but he is, in my eye, the first Sultan started constitutional monarchy because willingly he distributed his power to the institutions. He decided for it. In Europe, uh, there was a chaos when people demanded more power for themselves rather than the kings having it. Whereas the Sultan, uh, Sultan Mahmud in 1830s, with again, very serious reforms, he delegated his power. So that's the first step that took us to today. And then we have the Tanzimat reforms, 1839 and 76, and then we have the era of constitutions. So when we come to 1920s, a lot of the reforms had roots back in history. For example, the language was uh, one of the most criticized. I know uh, a lot of people say, well, probably we shouldn't have done it. But I know if you go to Turkish Ottoman archives, in 1850s, we have a lot of petitions in the form of layha, 
presented to the Sultan that the children are struggling learning Ottoman language. Because the reason for this is that Ottoman language consists of three languages, Arabic, Persian, and Turkish. So you have majority of vocabulary from Arabic, but the grammar is Turkish. And the kids going out, speaking Turkish, when they come to school, they have to know Arabic grammar, Persian grammar, and it was too much for them. So there is what we call sadeleştirme. They were purifying the language, it, in fact, trying to bring it closer to the spoken Turkish language. So what we are seeing, many of the reforms in, 80, uh, in 1920s and 30s... Had its roots in the 1850s. Had, had its roots. For example, it is in 1857, the first uh, Ceza Kanun Namesi, the criminal code, had been accepted. So it was a major shift in the Ottoman, uh, 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 in Ottoman structure because for hundreds of years, they had a different legal system where it was more open for interpretation. But now the French law, that's what the world was going into, was more codified law, which means that you describe uh, what the law is, or put it that way, you describe the crime and then you have the punishment for it. It's all written and the judges just implement. So when in 1920s a new uh, a criminal code was or, or justice system was established, what you can see it's almost how many? Like not 100, but 75 years ago, they had it there and the discussions and debates were already there. So it did not happen just like that. Well, we have nothing today, uh, nothing much to do. Let's you know, announce a new law. It wasn't like that. It uh -huh. was like a long process, especially heated debates took place after 1908 when Ittihat ve Terakki Cemiyeti, the new party, again the single party, which was dominating the uh, politics, they themselves introduced many of the reforms then. So these heated debates led to institutions adopting uh, uh, new powers I agree. in 1920s and 30s. Yes. And, yes, and how did this sort of translate into the early years of the Republic and, and it sort of establishing its own identity? Well, it is again a long process. We can see it didn't happen in one day. The establishing the national identity starts as early as 1910s. So they're discussing the Turkishness. Who do you call Turkish? Before that, we have these brilliant discussions on 1850s. Who is the Ottoman? How do you describe Ottoman? Is the Ottoman the person who speaks Ottoman language or living in that territory? 